All right, what's going on, everybody? I pray y'all are having a wonderful, blessed day as we thank the Most High for so much. My title now says, Never Trusting in Man. Never Trusting in Man. Welcome back to this Bible study. I'm um, going back to Jeremiah chapter 17, um, a powerful book, powerful prophet. Um, prophet Jeremiah, we learn so much. And then you read the book of Lamentations and you know, a lot of people call Jeremiah the weeping prophet, you know, because he saw so much go down and it just tore his heart up. And the way people hated Jeremiah, lied on Jeremiah, couldn't stand him, they mocked him at times. And this book shows about what happened when you try man's way instead of Yahweh. Um, and we see in this book that Babylon was used to actually punish Judah's sin. And even you'll read where the Most High took what all they had and gave it to their enemies. And Jeremiah urged the king and the people to surrender to Babylon. You know, but in spite of what Jeremiah went through, he remained faithful. So as we look at chapter 17 here, I'm just kind of summing it up till we get down to verses 5 through 11. In the first part of chapter 17, we see the punishment of Judah from the Most High. And he showed them one generation after another, what did they kept doing? They keep doing paganism. They had set up all kind of pagan altars. They worshiped goddesses. So once again, the Most High took everything that they had, that Judah had, and gave it to Judah's enemies. And the Most High even showed them, you know what? You will lose your land. The land that I gave you, you're going to lose it. I'm going to make you slaves in a foreign country. So this is what's bringing us up to verses 5 through 11. I'm going to look at verses 5 through 11 for time's sake, and then I'll be out of your way. This is about trusting in the Most High. Now my title once again says, Never Trusting in Man. And if you or trusting in man, I pray you come out that way because that way will lead you to destruction. So when we look at verse 5 in chapter 17, it says in the Most High's word, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm and whose heart departed from the Lord. Now this scripture is so powerful to me off the top. When you read this and study this and, and understand this, their confidence was in man. They had turned their hearts from the Most High. They always saw a better way to, to them versus Yahweh. Just like when Israel, when you look at Egypt, they wanted to go back into captivity. History repeats itself. When you look at where we at right now, the mindset of most of us, we still keep going back into captivity. We done been set free, made free, and still want to turn back and go back into bondage. It just keep repeating itself over and over again. And I'm talking about a spiritual bondage right here now. Their confidence was in man, my brothers and sisters. They was turning for help in other ways. They was depending on human strength. And once again, their hearts was far from the Most High. That's why they was punished. They was trusting in man's way once again. So many pastors right now, church builders, church folks, wondering why their church is not growing, wondering why people are dying spiritually, because they keep looking at traditions of men going man way. Well, Papa and them ran the church like this. Well, you know, this is tradition. We've been doing this for years. Just because you've been doing something so long don't mean you've been doing it right. And I mean that out of love. So many people see another way. And every time you turn man's way, let me just say mankind in this video, you're going to stay further and further away from Yahweh. Look at verse 6. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Inhabited, excuse me. When you think about a desert, how hot it is. 
you look at a shrub. In other words, they are gonna be like that desert shrub that don't know when the relief is coming. They are gonna live in parched places of the wilderness. Really where can't nobody survive at. So he's showing you this is what happened when you turn from Yahweh. You're going to be after lost, dead spiritually, and after a while physically. Let's just be honest. But look at verse 7. I like this turning point. It says, but blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. See, that's the man I want to be, that righteous man. I don't want to be in the category with the wicked man. Blessed is the man that trusted. Not in man way, but Yahweh. Y'all wonder why old JT stays so set apart? Because I'm looking at this world way, and I'm looking at Yahweh. I'm looking at Satan's system, and I'm looking at the Most High system. I'd rather reject Satan's system and stay in the Most High system, as Brother P.P. John has been preaching about for years on her now. Big shout out to you, big brother. Blessed is that man that trusted in the Lord. When you think about that alone, we should all be asking ourselves right now, who am I really trusting in? Let's just be real. In this life, things take a toll on us. Sometimes we get so caught up in what we got going on in this life, and we start focusing on bills and house notes and, you know, all the stuff going on with your children and wives and husbands. And just, you get loaded down, and then you start making your own way. You start praying for things and then it don't happen when you want it to happen. So you start making your own little way. That's not the way to go. We got to stay under the shadows of the Almighty. We got to stay on this on this thin line, this, this narrow path that's very hard to, to, to walk a lot of times. Because you got so much coming against you. But our Father never told us this walk was going to be easy. But it is possible to make it. But you're not going to make it without the Father. Verse 8 says, For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spread out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he come, cometh. But the leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. I love that. Being a, We will be like a tree planted by the river. Streams, we could say. The roots that reach down in that water. And you know what they don't even worry about? They don't worry about no drought. They don't fear no drought when it comes. Because the leaves going to stoop, they still going to do what? They going to remain green. You ever see them trees that have been up, sun, they done been up under so much water, so much happened to them? Or even when you look at a palm tree down like in Florida, man, a, a strong storm can come by, shake that tree, rock that tree so many ways. And, and everything else around the tree can be towed up, but you never see them trees fall down or break hardly because they deeply rooted. The question is, are we deeply rooted in the spirit? Hmm. But look at verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Woo! See, when you start talking about a wicked heart, people with a reprobated mind, as the Bible calls them, reprobates, reprobates, or some might call it reprobates, that's beyond help. And I'm, let me say this the right way. Not saying that the most tie don't have the power. These type of hearts, these type of people have rejected the most tie. They don't want help. So the most tie shows you in the word that he turns them over to their own flesh to do what they love best. Turn them over to their own because they don't want the knowledge, they don't want the truth, and they have rejected the most high, so there's nothing else the most I can do for them. And some of this is our kin folks, co-workers, family members, maybe your husband, children, sister, brother, uncle, auntie, the list goes on and on. These people's heart is beyond help. Who can figure it out? Who already know it? The most high. That's why he say the heart is deceitful above all things. It's desperately wicked. 
Who can know it? Question mark. Who I already know it. This is why I tell people, quit walking around talking about you. You mean no God know my heart. The most time know your heart, how wicked you are, how messed up your heart is. Is your heart have do your heart have the right motive? See, you can't fool the most high. A cunning heart, you don't want that. As my brother PP Jones would say, how is your heart posture behind what you do? See, so much to say about the heart. When you look at this scripture, now, verse number nine, it say the heart is deceitful above some things, above all things. That, excuse me, that's why he said in his word that they could worship me with their lips, but their heart far from me. Verse 10, we almost there, y'all. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, and according to the fruit of his doing. This is why your heart have to be pure. It have to be right. You should want to be right and live for the most time. Because when you live for the most time, let me tell you something. The benefits is amazing. It's a blessing. I don't care what job you work on and what the benefits look like, the benefit package, who can offer you the best. Let me tell you something. There is nothing in this world that can offer you the best that the most time can offer you. I ain't just talking about money. Health and strength, a peace of mind. See, you can have all the money in the world, but you can't buy a good night's sleep. You can have a big old fancy bed and be tossing and turning all night. You can't buy the love from the Most High, nor can you buy the Most High's gift. See, it's just some things you just can't pay for. But he was so awesome that he gave it to us. Now, what are we going to give back in exchange? He searches the heart. Verse 11, as we close out, as the partridge sitting on the eggs and hatches them not, so he that get it riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at the end shall be a fool. See, this is why the Bible comes back and says in, in the New Covenant too, what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Look at this scripture. He that's getting rich and it's not the right way. Hmm. See, ain't nothing wrong with money. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. The Most High want us to have money. Want us to have nice things. We don't serve no broke heavenly father. People just start letting their material things and wealth be, the, be their God. That's why he said you cannot serve two masters. Two masters could be anything. Most religious folks just want to tell you that when you're singing R&B music. Uh, you, you singing the devil music. You can't serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. Two masters could be anything. Your job can be your master. Them women you serve and fellas can become your master. Ask Solomon. So many things that can become your master. And if you're not careful, it already have you. He say people that's like this, it look like they doing right in verse 11, but the end of it shows you they ain't nothing but a fool. And we all know what a fool is. Y'all, that's my time. Thank you for tuning in. This is Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 11. May the Most High add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and most of all, the doers of his holy, holy word. What's the use of reading and studying? If you're not going to do it. So y'all, that's my time. Y'all take care. Until the next time, peace out.